Just kidding. Um, hey YouTube, this is my first ever makeup tutorial. This is about brows. Um, it's kind of uh, based off of the really, really popular trend right now in Asia. I think it originated in Korea. It's the like straighter, thicker, fuller looking eyebrows. Um, and it's all over like the Asian makeup ads and stuff. So yeah, um, my brows are not naturally full at all. And like for the longest time, I've always had trouble doing my brows or struggled with it and just frustrated sometimes because, you know, I don't have hair growth in some areas and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's tough to, you know, try to emulate or achieve the, you know, natural full brow look. And um, this is kind of my current routine, which I feel like is kind of working for me. Sure, it's not the perfect brow. Uh, I don't think I'll ever have that, but um, it's the closest that I could find to uh, something that, you know, I can walk out and feel confident with. Um, so yeah, I don't know if any of you out there also have uh, frustration with your brows and, you know, if you do, you're not alone. Hey, what's up? You know, I really hope that this tutorial is somewhat uh, helpful, entertaining, or um, yeah. You know, you don't have to take away the whole entire routine. I hope that bits and pieces of it could even contribute to however you're doing your brows at this moment. So, um, but anyways, uh, I'm going to stop rambling and keep watching for the tutorial. Okay, so now we're going to begin this tutorial. Um, as you can see, my eyebrows are not filled in. Um, I have some residual um, coloring from my previous... Um, eyebrow tattoo that I it's like I was experimenting and uh, I got it done at like one of the Chinese like facial shops it's kind of like faded and the shape isn't the best but it's it has been done and it's kind of like um, is it permanent or near permanent um, sort of dye or whatever pigment they use and um, so it's not really going away um, fully just it's fading slowly um but yeah i have to work around my <clears throat> pre-existing tattoo pigment okay as you can see i have i'm not genetically blessed with like thick full eyebrows or nicely um shaped or consistent hair growth out of my eyebrow hairs um but i try to make do with what i can um i I mean, I can't really blame anyone because when I was in high school and junior high, I tried to follow that trend of an eyebrow um, sort of look, and then I overplucked a lot of my brow hairs, and as a result, it, a lot of them didn't grow back. So you know, for as long as I can remember, my brows have always been a source of, um, not, I don't want to say stress, but... Um, sometimes, yeah, we get frustrated because my brows are just so, um, they're, the hair growth is so regular and the shape isn't really, um, it never really matches any of the trends. So anyhow, um, I hope this tutorial is helpful for this reason. I don't know if any of you out there have the same issue with your eyebrow hair, with your eyebrows. So after playing around with many different products and combinations of products. I've settled on the following products for my daily brow routine and um, I find that this combination really doesn't compromise um, the outcome uh, for ease of use. So in other words, it doesn't make my brows look worse but it does help me to do them faster in the morning and that's huge for me because I'm always running late and I can't be you know held back or burdened with a very like complicated brow sort of routine or any part of my makeup routine for that matter because um, it just ain't gonna work for me so this is what I use currently and if you have similar products please feel free to use those and try those out first thing is well this can really you can really find some other stuff to substitute for this long handled cotton swab but I use this as a way of um, gauging like where I want my brows to start um, and to create like a border or a guideline of how where I want to fill it in and 
where it starts. So this is one of the things. Another one is the Anastasia Perfect Brow Pencil in medium brown. And another product is the Milani Brow Tint Pen that I use. Um, yeah, this one, I mean, this is not the best brow pen product. It's actually very pigmented. So um, when you're, if you're going to be using something like this, you have to be really careful and, and how much pressure you use to apply. Um, there are other brow pens I've used, like the Japanese brand ones. Um, I feel like those tend to be a little bit more forgiving um, for on the application for like people that don't have as much control on how much pressure they use when they put on their brows. Um, that's a little bit better because the pigmentation is not as strong and you can kind of go over a place or a spot more than once and it wouldn't be like, it wouldn't look like marker or something like you really were using a brow marker or a pen. So uh, anyhow, I have chosen this one because I've used the other brow pins quite often and um, I've gotten a little bit better at using brow pins so I, I have, you know, I, I'm able to control the application of this particular pin um, and it's cheaper it's like seven something bucks at like you know CVS or Target and I, I like how it's accessible like you can get this anywhere the Japanese pins those you can get like only at Japanese markets or you have to go online and look for them and um, I just find like this is the most um, easy to purchase and most affordable in my opinion so I've stuck with this brow pen for a while. And the last product, you can essentially use any um, brow pencil you want actually. Um, I got this one again because it's very easy to obtain. It's cheap. And, yeah, it's real, I mean, how else to say it? It's really cheap. It's like always in a two pack. It's by Maybelline. It's called the Maybelline Expert Wear. I'm sure you've seen this um, on the rack somewhere or like on the counters because I know Maybelline has, has had this pencil forever and it was like one of their first, well, oops. this is like one of their first products that they've come out, like they've, yeah, they've produced. So um, it's like one of their staple products been around for a while. Anyways, I'm rambling, sorry. Um, yeah, so this one is in the color Velvet Black, and this one isn't too dark. It's it's kind of similar to the color of my brow. What I want to do um, is I want to create a border on the bottom um, of my brows so that I know where not to go past when I'm coloring them in, um, and I want a sort of a straight brow look but I don't want it to be like um, too straight because my face, my facial architecture, I think doesn't really match the like perfectly straight brow. So I try to like um, make do and make a little bit of a curve. So um, here, let me just try to show you instead. So I have like a border on the bottom and I'm not going to touch the front of my brows yet. I'm just going to focus on getting my border and then I'm going to focus on filling in that gap between my residual hairs or color and the border. Okay. so now that I've got like and I'm going very lightly by the way I'm not going heavy-handed because I don't want to do something messed up and then like not be able to correct it or the mistake is so great I have to like go over and do my own whole brow again which is going to take a lot more time so I'm going very lightly and try to sit closer and get a better idea this is better okay and then I'm going to do the same thing for my left side. So again, I'm going to do a border. Go straight across, but a little bit of a curve at the end. Because I want to lift my eyebrow, or lift my eyes up. When you have like a really straight brow, you, 
you can easily look like your eyes are tired or dragged down. Um, so I do like a straighter line in the front and then I kind of curve it up, make it like kind of a lift, make a lift. Does that make sense? I'm just going to cover it, color the border between the border and my hairs and residual color on my brows. Um, and again, I'm going lightly with my pencil. Um, one way you can go lightly with your pencil product is if you hold it near the middle or the end of the product, the, the stem, the handle or whatever, however you want to call it, because when you hold it further out, you, you um, get less of a pressure or control of the, the, front, the front portion, the tip, and then the deposit of color is lighter as a result without you really even having to try. I know some people might be like, oh, well, you can stop here. But for me, I have this picture of the straight brow with like more thickness, fullness in the front, um, and then kind of a square front. So I'm going to keep going. So for this portion, I'm going to um, take the other brow pencil that I have, which is the lighter brown one, if I can find it. Oh, here it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, this one. And then here's the spoolie at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brown and then go over where I went earlier with my other. And when you're doing this, or when you're coloring your brows in, like with any product, the more, if you want to look more natural, you want most of the color to be at the end. So yeah, you're kind of coloring all your brows, but you can go a little bit um, extra. You can put a little bit more color near the ends because then it kind of creates the illusion of a more realistic brow. So I'm going to color the um, the ends a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to round this part a little bit because it's a little bit sharp. Not my fault. That's what the lady did at my um, spa that when they did my eyebrow tattoo she had the idea of what she wanted and I wasn't really allowed to tell her what to do and now in the front I'm going to try to create the more thicker um, front brow with a little bit of a square tip so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cotton swab handle I'm going to align it right between my nose so I've been watching like and reading other like pro makeup artist um, like advice and tricks and some people some makeup artists say we want to start at the outside of our nose you can totally do that if you have um, your eyes are kind of like close together or you want them to look more outwards more separated then you can definitely start at the side the outside um, um, border of your nose your nostril and if you start out here, it'll actually bring your eyes out forward um, towards the side. So separate your eyes more. If you want, if your eyes are kind of far apart and you want them to look a little bit closer together, you could start a little bit closer to the midline of your nose. So you can start here. And if you really need to, you can even start like right here. So like leaving your, your nasal bridge, your nose bone, like right next to it, the stick. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to look really weird. So well, I'm going to probably start like right between the two points. So between the outside of my nostril and the middle of my nose. And I'm going to not hold it straight like this because then I'll have like a straight brow um, inner edge. So I'm actually going to tilt it a little bit so that it looks a little bit more natural. So now I'm going to take that medium brown pencil and just go... Um, towards the border okay. and I'm going really lightly I'm holding the ends of my the opposite end of my pencil and I'm going to create the bottom border and stop where I see my wooden stick And now we'll do the same thing with my 
other eyebrow. So again, a bit between my tip of my nose and outside of my nose and slightly slanted. I'm gonna go in and color. Same here's the bottom face. not like totally unnoticeable that there's some sort of mistake here I the lines aren't really um, nice it's kind of too little high up so I'm going to show you how I fix my mistakes um, it's not really the I'm not really worried about it because um, it's really quick to fix so anyways I'm just coloring in and then I'm going to um, like create more of a dry a um, little bit more color at the um, curve of my eyebrows so that it makes it look a little bit more longer. Okay. So don't worry about the harsh edges because we're going to blend it out with the spoolie. Okay, so before I blend out with the spoolie, I'm going to fix my mistake. Um, if you can see here on my um, this brow right here, the top border is way higher than I wanted it to be so I'm going to go in and fix that and what I do I just take a piece of tissue paper and stick my finger in there and then I get it so that my nails are kind of like right at the edge so it's really fine where I have more control and precision when I, where I want to erase so I just take it and I go and I just kind of wipe it yeah there you go okay so yeah um, let's get a little bit more off. Okay. And then here I think it's fine. Yeah, they somewhat match. And another thing is you don't want your eyebrows to look exactly identical because that's not how real eyebrows are supposed to be anyways. So here, coloring this in. A little bit more. So now we're going to take the spoolie and we're just going to Mm, kind of blend the edge of it so that it's not so harsh looking. I'm just going to do a light brush throughout my brows. Lightly brush. The key is to get rid of all the sharp edges. I know some people like sharp edges, but for me, I have a very angular face, and so I try to counteract that by having softer edges for my brows. Um, so where was I? All right. So I'm gonna go in and just do a little bit more correction with my finger tool. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit here. There we go. Take a little bit here. You can just adjust as you need um, to fit the idea you have in your mind on how your eyebrows want to look or how you want your eyebrows to look. Oh, I'm not even making sense anymore. Um, yeah, so just going over with a little bit more of the darker pencil lightly just to fill in whatever sparse area that I have. This is to your own liking. So at this point, we're pretty much done with our brows. One last step I like to do, and this is completely optional, you don't have to do it. This is using that Milani brow pencil that I, or sorry, brow pen that I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm not sure how much you can pick up on camera, but um, there are just some areas. Remember how I have a whole piece of skin area on my brows that does not have much hair growth? That part, I tend to just go over it with where I draw some, a few light strokes, kind of mimicking the direction of my hair growth. Um, just It's kind of like for peace of mind even for me. I mean, you can't really see a problem with my brows right now, but I'm going to just lightly do that. So up and out, because that's where your hair will go. And you know, I'm not coloring it, I'm just drawing lines. Being light-handed is key. So um, here I'm doing the same for my other brow. Let's 
so this is the finished brow look. I hope you enjoyed the video and um, thanks for putting up with this noob sort of a video because I'm still learning how to do like the editing and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, so I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to making more videos. If you want to request a tutorial for this look or if you want to see more makeup videos in general, show some support and yeah, thumbs up, like, subscribe, um, and I hope you're having a fantastic day and